Yeah. What's up, guys, and welcome back to the ESL One Hamburg South America Qualifier Grand Finals. We got SGE Sports taking on Team Taka in this here second game as SGE. Well, they somehow grabbed the first game after Team Taka made a couple of grave remaining. mistakes. Dyer Buying back an empty mage when he has like five seconds left on respawn, not really recommended, and then getting picked off, it's all bad. But here we go into game two. If the other best of five finals are any indication, SGE have this in the bag, 3-0, but here's hoping we break that curse and have some more interesting games. I'm Mike Loris, going to be joined by Eckstein for this second game. Spearbreaker, Batrider, Ten Lich, seconds. Puck, looks like things are still pretty normal here, man. Yeah, the uh, Necrophos ban coming out from Team Taka, so kind of signifying that they didn't want it to get picked against them, and they also didn't really want to feel like they were forced into picking them themselves, so... Uh, they end up giving away the uh, Lich and uh, take the Spirit Breaker themselves. We're getting into our second phase of bans here. And uh, it was a nice close game. I, I hope that Taka can put together um, another good competitive draft here. Keep the game rolling. Keep their you know strategy in place. And um, we'll see another close game here. Because I, I, I said it was a sudden finish in the chat, but I didn't feel like the game was uh, too far apart. You know. Yeah. For sure, S SGE, it feels like they should have had to battle back a little bit harder than what they were able to get away with, at least in the last yeah. game to claim that victory. But uh, Team Taka showing that they're, they're no slouches. Yeah. Again, lots of people would discount them immediately since who the hell is Taka? Mm -hmm. We know SGE Sports, but uh, I think they don't deserve that disrespect Radiant far, far from it. Going to keep Shadowburn in the mix with his Bat Rider. I do like how Taka... Are, you know, going to try to keep that as much as possible. Mm -hmm. The guy's an absolute all-star. Uh, Shadowburn is the current name of Tavo. I don't know if it's he's still Tavo or what, but uh, you guys may know him a little bit better as that name Ten was on like remaining. every single team in SA at one point in time. But yeah. uh, definitely has the experience. Remaining. But SG, they get the Lich again. Uh, didn't work out super fantastically Dying. in the last game as far as lane control was concerned. I felt like he was in the kind of the wrong lane, but still they had that experience lead. And they also get Puck most likely for Laposa. This is pretty much what SGE Sports do in as many games as they can find. Mm -hmm. Yeah, get him a strong hero that uh, he can work with. He's been able to do a great job just kind of controlling the seconds, map right? and rotating around, keeping things in check. And um, Five seconds, now the uh, pick coming back to uh, Taka here. And um, they uh, can kind of, you know, Pick something that doesn't reveal too much. Maybe they're position five and, and leave their carry in mid uh, for the rest, or they'll pick their mid. But hmm. well, ancient apparition Rubik still in silencer mm -hmm. is still in as well. And that's a no, silencer was first banned from SG. Oh, he's right there. Yeah, <laughs> he's he's not still in. I was gonna say like a pretty easy pick there for Taka if they really wanted that, but I would say yeah. probably Rubik floating mm -hmm. to the top of the pick phase here for Taka. If it is going to be their position five, it could just be uh, them looking to get a couple of these other cores. They do have the last pick, so uh, maybe the safe lane selection or Shadow Shaman. <laughs> Haven't really seen all that much Shadow Shaman Spirit Breaker. has kind of fallen in and out of fashion as these mm -hmm. uh, games do get played, but still with this now amount of disable, for sure they'll have enough game to kill off a puck and try to deal with him. And of course, you are able to, with the Batrider, start fights around towers remaining. and also kill off the towers. So I'm a, I'm a pretty big fan of Shadow Shaman, especially Five with Spirit Breaker. Remaining. Yeah, that's definitely a pretty good control that they have overall. Dyer you team. pull somebody in with the lasso yes. and Batrider, sure. Shadow Shaman's going to be able to shackle people. But Earthshaker, definitely kind of a classic uh, hero that can disrupt Radiant Shadow Shaman. He's going to be standing still in place so and just tag him with that fissure. They're going to pick up Venno as well, and uh, that will either be a mid or safe lane Venno, um, considering the rest of their heroes. Yeah, Venomancer isn't really all that great versus a puck, but does have the Shadow Shaman Spear Breaker, and mm -hmm. will be able to deal with that if the need arises. Although it, I think the flexibility Five here is really where it comes into play here for Team Taka. They've been throwing some really odd heroes the way of Masha and throwing him towards the mid lane. Well, we saw now Terror Blade and Anti Mage in the past couple of games from Taka uh, for Masha for the mid lane. So the Venomancer selection, you know, maybe not quite as weird, but depending on what SG Esports grab, and they will be able to see that beforehand, they'll be able to throw the Venomancer there in response. Uh, but for sure, if, if SG Esports feel like greeting out a little bit, 
going for someone like a Phantom Lancer, they could keep themselves damn near immune to being ganked in that mid lane. It's impossible to land a charge on a Phantom Lancer unless you somehow force a doppelgang beforehand. We've seen them do that in the past with ADR, and they could even dual lane with the Lich. So they, they do have many, many options here, SGE. As, this back. is going to be a Weaver game, it seems. Not the easiest game to be Weaver, but uh, yeah. for sure is another hero that Venomancer struggles to deal with. Yeah, still very elusive with um, high amounts of damage. So we'll be able to chunk through all of the uh, Taka heroes right now pretty quickly. Um, nobody, you know, who's walking around all that tanky or naturally builds a lot of tanky items. Broodmother going to be banned out. Interesting band selection. Usually when you do that, remaining. you're saying we're kind of going to go for a Drow Ranger here. And SG Esports, are they going to catch on to that? Because that could really truly mess up a drow ranger if it's venomancer mid batrider offlane drow shadow Tom and spirit breaker I mean, they can just tear down these structures in sge they just won't have the amount of kill power necessary to actually deal with that of course the, the last pick is, is most likely going to be for adr and that's most of the time where the kill power at least versus drow ranger is uh, going to come from but that might be messing with sge a little bit here the T Taka also have a Meepo, and that is currently still in the pool. That also won't be the worst. Yeah, that would be interesting. You know, all the nets for Weaver is obviously a great option. And again, it's kind of one of those heroes that kind of has some mobility um, to, to jump around and kind of, you know, dodge uh, some of the action that SG Esports will be throwing at him. Yeah, up against a, a decent amount of AoE here for SGE if they... Really do want to do that type of strat, Taka. It does seem like they could kind of go for either one of those type of heroes and just kind of cheese out the game. They could also just go for like a Terror Blade and start playing incredibly aggressively. And look at these heroes for SG Esports. They do end up doing a lot of damage, but it does take them quite a long time to get to that stage. Like Weaver will only have Shikuchi, Puck. If he's going towards the offlane, won't really have that much damage either. They're going to ban out the Invoker. And SGE, for, for ADR, they need a hero that can do some damage we have seen adr play the weaver before but uh i'm not really sure if that's entirely realistic in this game for a, for a non mid selection it really will depend on uh, what they feel like going for and how much pressure they feel i Five do think that taka remaining. can really play this game super aggressively and get away with it unless we see a really really fighty hero from sg esports gonna have to figure it out soon five seconds left on the clock here Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mirana. Interesting mm. selection. This is a little bit more initiation. Definitely the burst damage is quite nice here from this hero. But it is going to mean that Taka can go for any really any one of those kind of cheesy strats that we were describing before. If they do go for a Drow, I think they will just be able to just wreck Five at least all the tier 1s incredibly early. Perhaps I'm just underestimating like how much damage a Lich can do experience-wise versus a Drow, but I don't see SG Esports really being able to challenge that. Yeah, and that would just turn Shadow Shaman into just like an insane right-clicking hero in the early stage. And they're going to go Anti-Mage, so... Hmm. Yeah, not quite what we for were... Mid. I hit Anime Venomancer safe lane. Yeah. Huh. So Looks like this is actually going to be another kind of a, a greedy lane setup here for Team Taka. We, we saw Anti-Mage versus Invoker in the last game and how he's able to kind of just shrug off that right click and, and even in certain situations just jump in, kill the Invoker. In this game, you can't really jump in and kill the Marana, but Marana's base damage is low and it stays lower for more time than an Invoker who gets Exhort. So I, I do like, I don't mind the selection from Taka, although I do think they could have gone for a little bit better. Yeah, both of them. The Meepo would have been interesting. Um, the Marana, you know, kind of mixed, I guess, results against that. Obviously, dodging an arrow with six Five people gets a little bit remaining. trickier. Um, Starfall, you know, just kind of the confirmed uh, damage from that helps out quite a bit. But um, drafts, are, drafts are interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, who do you interesting think? Interesting for uh, sure. Yeah. From, from the Taka side, it's, it's not too far off of what they did in the last game like the same kind mm -hmm. of base concept i mean obviously have two similar cores so how, how honestly how different can it be but 
We'll see what SG Esports are able to do with this Weaver. Let's see how successful this Marana is going to be. Uh, Leap for sure is going to be really nice at trying to survive in that mid lane, but you got to make sure you don't use it too early. The charge can still land and the Anti-Mage able to blink in as well. The Marana is... I'm always kind of 50-50 on the Marana. First of all, she has like the worst cosmetic ever. That mask is horrendous. But uh, yeah. yeah, the lane control always seems like it's a little bit of a toss-up. And I'm not really sure where the Lich is going to end up here for SG. Might just uh, have Bardino bouncing around between lanes, giving those sacrifices. Yeah, it could go uh, either way here. Um, definitely a really nice team fighting lineup from SG Esports. Um, I think that they'll be able to coordinate it really well and just spit out a ton of damage. Uh, on the flip side, though, you know, if Taka gets the engagements right, you, you definitely feel like that they have a lot of control and that they'd be able to put the damage on SG Esports and uh, win these fights uh, real quickly. But um, they're going to have to get a good laning stage, get that Animage kind of rolling uh, pretty fast, as well as probably do a better job getting him involved in some of these earlier fights uh, than they did last game. Right now, though, he's just going to be taking a ton of damage here. He leveled up that Mana Break, so Shackle's going to come out here on the Earth uh, on the Earth Shaker, but Maasha actually is going to get first blood here. I'm not really sure where the Spirit Breaker is yeah. running in from, but it's a little bit too far. PTT can't arrive, and that's just great recognition there from SG Esports, saying that, oh, our Earth Shaker's losing mana, which usually is just a, a straight Those bad thing. You're like, oh shit, my Earth Shaker's losing mana, yeah. time to run away, but no, they, they had the heroes there, and with one level only on this Anti-Mage, and having already committed it into Mana Break, it's an incredibly aggressive move there from the Taka side. It's saying that we want to fight you. If you're going to fight over this rune, we're fine fighting back, but it's kind of a common trap. Like, yeah. you got to save your skill point until you see what's going on. Yeah, ended up not being the best calculation there. As uh, just too many players on top of him, and he gets gunned down pretty easily. A golden threat. Bardino is going to do the pretty standard Lich stuff right now, sack the first creep. You want to give that mid lane a level advantage ASAP if possible. And actually will be, never mind, yeah, still gonna... Masha moving out of his lane towards top lane anti-mage. I thought maybe we'll grab that bounty rune and you know, maybe switch off afterward after having seen some of those heroes. But no, I hate anime is on the mid lane and he will have probably just as good a lane, if not even better, than the AM ADR arrow yes. onto the Spirit Breaker. Oh. We'll stop the charge, but he'll stay, still take Gale, couple right clicks, and we'll lose a lot of HP. This is not an easy lane for Marana. Again, Marana's lane control is really always going to be kind of limited with her base damage, her super slow moving projectile. And if she's gonna get plague warded here, then she really can't do much about that except for slowly chip him out. Sanaba. Yeah, we have a pretty good setup for the Veno. The um, Spirit Breaker already switching around is gonna charge bottom now. And we had a stack in pull and top lane as well. So anti-mage getting set up pretty well here. Radiance middle tower is Charge is coming attack. in. I think he did run over that ob, so PTT is spotted. And they'll never really be able to kill off a weaver, so they might as well take the value trades while they can get him just for damage. Worked out pretty well. Speaking of working out pretty well, an arrow lands oh, wow. on the mid lane. That is with no leap amplification with this attack speed, but still they should have this kill. He's kind of cornered. He actually just can't move. Stuck in between two heroes. And that is going to be a nice arrow setup. Forcing a Venomancer down a super narrow corridor like that, and the arrow kind of, you know, yeah. put itself. Yeah, that was perfect, and uh, really hit the arrow in the trees as well. It's e sometimes easy to dodge those arrows, but if they're tucked away and you only have you know, literally a second. It's a tricky play. Raposa is still on this top lane and yes. is not currently spotted, but man, this puck really doesn't have that much aggressive power versus an anti-mage. You can see that one right click, 40 damage, whatever. Uh, the Shadow Shaman with the shackles, the anti-mage now with the blink, can very easily just jump in towards the puck, drain out a little bit of mana seemingly for free. So the puck does have to worry about that, but uh, as long as the Posa stays in the trees, he probably is just going to get all the experience he could ever want. Uh, you know, occasionally denied here and there, but uh, this Puck just has to make sure that he has eyes up on the Shadow Shaman, because with Anti-Mage by himself, he can't kill him. With the Spirit Breaker coming in, they might be able to. Laposa is awkwardly cut off now from mm -hmm. his tower, and he should know that something's up. He does have an orb to the low ground, and I think he should be fine. 
This is the charge I'm assuming is going to get phase shifted, but then he's immediately going to get shackled. And jump in. Shackle. Oh, oh, four for four canceled. That's just one yeah. of those things where you don't expect the cast range to actually work at that distance. So I don't really yeah. blame him for that. Yeah, they probably weren't going to get a ton off of that animage to just use this blank and was a little bit off. So it uh, would have been nice to chip away at Puck a little bit further. Not the biggest health pool, so just to whittle it down. Um, always good. Does have six tangos, though, so plenty of health there. So uh, regen rune has been saved for uh, the full minute there. Oh. Was just standing on top of that, making sure nobody else came along. So that came in handy for ADR to just get completely back up to 100% here. You can see Theo, he's just interested in just harassing back a little bit. We can I hit anime enough, you'll be able to land an arrow, but uh, as far as combos are concerned for this mid lane, Earthshaker Marana really isn't one, unless you're able to, again, funnel someone down a super narrow corridor, or mm -hmm. make sure that they're actually pinned against a wall and literally cannot move to land an arrow. Uh, Fisher's stun doesn't last long enough for an arrow to actually arrive in time, so Theo can't really do all that much here to set up for kills, at least not super easily, but in the meantime, just sticking around, making sure this lane is not entirely safe for I hit, I hit anime. ADR, ADR has grabbed quite a bit of CS. It's pretty much an entirely even lane, and now with that ring of Aquila, oh, they get the courier snipe up top. That's bad. I hit anime's lane just got even worse, because he's not going to have any more regen. Yeah, that was a great pickup uh, by uh, SG, just in the right place at the right time. Uh, the puck had gotten that bounty. And uh, perfect positioning. They also get a kill on Shadow Baron here. Might be able to get PTT as well, as uh, he does not have a mana for a charge. Weaver and Earthshaker, he does not get the enchant totem slow, but uh, are just going to be able to get the um, kill on him. And they tried to go for the Lich, ended up dropping him very, very low. And killing off a Lich as any hero by yourself, uh, you know, just with like say Batrider kills off a Lich, is actually really nice. Usually is just viewed as just another support hero, but when you get this many sacrifices out, level 2 in the spell, and you just keep mm -hmm. spamming it, you end up becoming a really high level hero. And that means that the kills are going to give you a lot of experience back. I hit anime though, and a little bit of trouble perhaps. Fissure is going to wall him off. Enchant, to Enchant Totem Sun is there with this double Star Storm. Gets them the kill. ADR is going to now grab Phase Boots, which is going to get him quite a bit of extra distance here. He is going to get charged one more time, and a well, PTT. Landing the right clicks in. 4 for 4 is gonna get in range for a hex. Get in range for a shackle. But can they actually kill off this shaker? He does have the arcane boot, so he's a little bit fast here. There is a charge coming in. Bardinho's going to drive. Activate the shrine, and Theo is gonna survive. Turning around now for a two man fissure. Bardinho doesn't have any more offensive power, but they land another enchant totem. PTT dead to the lich. And 4 for 4 does not have boots. They can continue chasing. Theo, keep going, man. He's not gonna be able to get into his shrine. He's just dead here. Just to one right click from the Lich again. Double kill for Bardinho. The Lich rotations are real. And I think they may be able to even stick around. They have an Invis rune on the Earthshaker and maybe another opportunity on Night Anime, though they do miss that arrow. Star Storm still does a lot of damage. ADR does have a leap out. We'll get some backup here. They'll try to turn around, race for the Venomancer, but from the high ground, Venomancer gets the kill. A little bit of miscommunication there, perhaps from SGE as to what should be done in that mid lane. But losing the Marana twice, that hurts despite the gains that mm -hmm. they've made. And over on the bottom lane, Shadowburn is trying to chase after this Lich, but has to reconsider. The damage is just enough nice. with that Shikuchi to get another kill for Bardinho again. I don't know how he's getting all these last hits. Yeah, that, that helps up picking up that kill on bottom. Uh, losing the Marana mid, definitely unfortunate. Was trying to just get that right click finish on I hate anime, but um, wasn't able to uh, leap away far enough afterwards Radiant to escape. The uh, top shire, uh, shrine has been used, so Laposa and Theo maybe gonna be able to see if they can mess with Masha a little bit here. Um, Masha, um, no boots yet, and I'm just kind of building up towards those power oh, treads, and um, probably not the best pace already with this battle, Battle Fury. Scan is gonna reveal the Lich, or see the Lich. Yeah, see the Earth Shaker. I think the scan was still red, so they know that there's three heroes here. Ob's gonna see PTT, and they of course oh. know Masha's here, so it's not gonna be incredibly easy to get on top of these heroes, but wow, ADR solo kills the Shadow Shaman in the meantime. While well, they're jockeying for position up towards this top lane. Shadow Shaman picked off in the river, not much room to juke out an arrow there. Uh, truly amazing camera work, I know, guys. Be jealous, but 
They're still now looking to apply pressure to this Anti-Mage, and I love it when teams do this. Like, you may give the Anti-Mage a couple levels as a good start, but in the end, if you're able to apply that pressure, it doesn't really matter. Coil now onto two heroes, orbing through as well. 444 is taking a lot of damage right now. He will get the Shackle, but it'll immediately be canceled by Theo. This Enchant Totem is working overtime. Chain Frost onto Masha. Will land, but it won't do quite enough damage. PDT should be brought down by the Puck as Shadowburn looking for a target into Theo. Into I Hate Anime. Uh, they're gonna corner the Lich, it seems. With all this slow, they're for sure gonna get this kill. Puck is going to jump out of there and will be Antimage jumping in, ending a killing spree, catapulting him forward into that Battle Fury Power Tread build. But still, the damage has kind of already been done. They lose two for that Lich. That is really, really expensive. Yeah, that, that was a tough one. They need to watch out here. I mean, again, the priority is going to be getting farm on an Animage, but uh, for Protect 1 overall as a way to win Dota games is kind of like slid off um, just the uh, list of uh, tactics that teams like to, to approach. And this Animage is just not going to be able to take it all by himself. He's getting close down here. Still doesn't have uh, boots as he's just trying to rush in towards Battle Fury. Uh, Theo kind of spotted him out and continued just to harass him with the Enchant Totem and um, driving him into these neutral creeps, so Masha just kind of taking a little bit more damage than he'd like. Engagement do, middle. Do get the mid lane tower denied. Rana with the, with the Lich there, just trying to get that tower down, and it is down, which is going to open up the map quite a bit now. As far as options are concerned, they do have that Moonlight Shadow, so maybe Ark can roam around pretty freely, but they're still making sure Masha is not able to farm the lane. At this point, it is very rare to see Anti-Mages not in lane farming. But Theo is just pushing him back with the arcane boots that he has with the stick as well. Mana break, yeah, still hurts the Shaker's mana pool, hurts his condition quite a bit, but he will be able to manage through that. PTT is going to land a charge onto Theo, but he doesn't have any true sight, so that's just the charge. And now he's in an awkward spot. Or four as well is walled off in the tree, so he literally cannot come here to help in. And they'll throw out the Chain Frost, which is going to bounce to a couple neutrals, bounce back to I hit anime, back to neutrals, back to I hit anime. It takes a lot oh, of no. damage, and now even. Hits Masha twice. They don't have enough backup coming in, but they will drop the coil regardless onto the Venomancer. The Posa does have another orb, but is not willing to throw it in. Where is this Marana? She's killing the, the Batrider elsewhere. They do land the orb on the Silence, onto the Shadow Shaman, but the Lich, one level of Ice Armor. Not really sure if it's going to save him here. Weaver has arrived, though. Is going to gun straight for the Venomancer. A couple right clicks with the orb. We'll get the kill. Bardino wasting so much time. He'll eventually be brought down, but Masha blinks straight into a Marana, and now PTT. He is in an awkward spot to say the least. Bug tracking is there, so they see exactly where he's going. Or flying through will kill off the Space Cow. Now looking for the Shadow Shaman, and another arrow will connect. Oh. Double kill for ADR, and ultimately everyone on Taka Jeez. dies. Really all over the map, but it's a full team wipe for SG Esports, even getting the Weaver involved. Yeah, that was pretty absurd. Pretty good uh, collection of kills for him. And uh, I was worried about them because it seemed like, you know, they're trying to fight a group of four with three players. Uh, but they had a really good separation there. And as the Shadow Shaman shackled the one player, you know, that's the downside of Shadow Shaman is when you're shackling somebody, you're just completely locked up. So you've taken somebody out of the fight, but you've also sort of taken yourself out of the fight. And uh, then Weaver and Miranda uh, showing up, uh, <laughs> you know, while a lot of the fight is already engaged. They perfectly chained on the anti-mage in the mid lane. That didn't look like the arrow should have done that much stun duration, but it worked out anyway. There's Ice Armor on the Mirana. She does have a leap. She'll get up to the high ground. Batrider can chase, but only Batrider can chase. Never mind. I'll have a Spirit okay. Breaker thrown in there as well. Chain Frost is out, though. Will bounce back to Shadowburn with the Star Storm. They'll kill off PTT. The Ancient's going to keep the Chain Frost bouncing. Will it bounce back to Shadowburn? No, but they'll have an Orb and Right Clicks. So they don't need more Chain Frost. I hate anime. You better start believing. Because yeah. you're gonna need an anime escape for this. Actually, well, never mind. Laposa's a lagging behind a little bit. It looks like he will be able to get out of there. Obviously, ADR was forced to rotate out very early on there, but with Moonlight Shadow, everyone else will survive. But this is looking like such a different game compared to the yeah. last where Taka were challenging SGE across all lanes. They were ahead in net worth, uh, maybe not by a huge amount, but you know, still doing just fine for themselves in this game. They're getting absolutely stomped. Bottom tower yeah, it's been a difficult one for them, for sure. I mean, we talked about the importance of getting an anti-mage, good start, and giving up first blood for them, and uh, having a TP back to the lane is uh, the complete opposite of that. Shadow Shaman also has been having issues uh, getting involved and doing much more besides just kind of standing alongside 
um, anti mage, and then um, same kind of the same thing with the spirit breaker. You know, he's not able to get gank kills with people. They haven't been this roaming unit of a spirit breaker and bat rider, um, you know, getting kills and causing a lot of pressure on people. Lane no, that is uh, currently devoid of heroes. This bottom lane is going to be where Taka are going to get some farm, some pressure back towards the Radiant, but SGE don't really care at all about that because top lane is being pushed by the Weaver. If a Blightstone, he doesn't. But still, just his constant persistence on this top lane will eventually bring it down, and he's been here for a very long time now. The tower will be taken tier 2, and yeah, they may lose a tier 1, but they're looking actually for two tier 2s. They're also pushing in towards this mid lane. Man, I mean, just looking at the net worth right now, like, it's obviously an SG Esports favorite. I do feel like, though, Theo perhaps doesn't have as much net worth as he has really earned, because he has been doing so much work as this Earthshaker, like, so many stuns landing on pretty much everyone, set up for a couple of anti-mage kills, and really just uh, denying Taka a lot of space to move around. Two tier 2s now down, and the tier 1, really, are you serious, is not even going to be taken. They will hex up the Shaker, but 4 for 4 is dead here. Ouch. Oh no, that's two tier 2 towers, a tower deny, and nothing for Taka. Uh, maybe even a little bit worse, actually. Spirit Breaker will orb, arrow oh. will connect from the north. I didn't even know ADR was still there. This is looking like this game is just off the rails here for Taka. They have no control at all. Yeah, definitely this has been a fantastic start for SG. They're just running around uh, pretty wild here, just able to get kills wherever they want. Uh, no ganks are going to be happening uh, for Taka. It, it'd have to be a five-man smoke gank, and you know, with Moonlight Shadow down and plenty of other conditions, Shadow Burn getting attacked here, uh, and the SG squad are just doing a great job of playing nearby each other. That they could just uh, jump if one person finds somebody from the other squad. So uh, they're just getting kills all over the place. It does feel like this game is going like actually perfectly for SG Esports. Like, Pretty much. just look at the textbook definitions of like support heroes. Like, we're supposed to help your yeah. fours win the lanes. And uh, Theo has smashed the lanes. Bertino as well, perhaps not as, uh, in not the same fashion, but still he's made the rotations as Lich. He's threw out great chain frost. Has been there for the experience. They have won the lanes for these cores of SGE. And you can't really say the same about 4 for 4 Shadow Shaman just now hits the level 6, but has done... I, I think we can say nothing for this for this yeah. team. And Spirit Breaker yeah. has tried as much as he could have tried, but it, he just didn't really have what it takes to match these rotations from SGE. So they're just getting catapulted ahead thanks to good performances from these supports. And it's even culminating into some now big rewards for them. Earthshaker maxed mm -hmm. down the Aftershock, has a Blink Dagger 15 minutes in as a support shaker. That's pretty disgusting. Yeah, they're doing pretty fantastic. I mean, the Lich uh, just spent some money on support items. Uh, otherwise, though, just about has the net worth of Spirit Breaker and Shadow Shaman combined. Um, and then um, Earthshaker is really not too far behind the Animage, which is uh, pretty depressing. The wards were dropped on the top tower. Hawk's just going to farm those. Masha, he was thinking about going in there, but he's like, eh, there's a puck nearby. Theo's still gonna jump in. Fissure will be dodged by the blink, but they still have a coil. They'll deploy it first thing. They need more stuns right now. They are gonna silence out the blink, enchant totem, and they have an arrow. They had Echo Slam also, but they didn't even need it. Not even close. They oh, no. killed him, and over in the bottom lane, Bardino in a little bit of trouble. Chain Frost has stopped, and they will take out the Lich. But for an anti-mage and a shadow shaman, again, these are just not worth it, especially since SG. Are they really looking to continue this fight? Laposa doesn't have a coil, but oh my god, ADR just jumped into the enemy base? Are you kidding, man? Careful, man. He has a double damage rune. He's feeling himself. A little bit too yeah. much, but it does, it's not punished. He doesn't really care. It's 14k net worth lead for SGE. Yeah, they're going to play this nice and calm. They're going to rotate their Marana back up to top lane. Take care of that biz over there and just push these lanes out. The other lanes are pushed all the way up to the base. But uh, they're just in a great space. Being able to kill that anti-mage again and uh, Weaver getting more money, more experience. Pretty, pretty fantastic stuff here. Masha has the weirdest item build I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. He's like, not sure what he should be getting. He's like, well, I know I want Battle Fury and Power Treads. So let's just build them both evenly and not get either. Yeah. So, I mean, he'll, he'll eventually get Boots, I'm sure. I mean, it's not like Boots would have helped him before. 
But uh, yeah, he's 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 slowly getting to that battle fury. It's going to be 19 minutes. That's so glacially yeah. slow. Is there a blink dagger on Shadowburn? Only a drum on the Bat Rider. Even if he does have a blink, with a blink echo and a blink puck, like it, this is no contest. Uh, AD, ADR is going to grab the Aegis in the meantime as Laposa was just kind of baiting in the mid lane while his allies were clearing out that objective. There is still no Desolator on the Weaver, but there's a Lincoln Spirit. I don't know how they kill a Weaver through Lincoln's TP out attempt from the Venomancer. I hate anime, will survive, but the Anti Mage also got jumped oh, no. on top lane. Blink echo, Anti Mage, where are you at? This is just going off the rails. Yeah. Like, they're just all dying everywhere. Not even like from huge movements from SG, just by small squads. Yeah, that was the same before the very last engagement. They lost Anti Mage to just the uh, Marana and uh, Earthshaker. Um, and, and while Weaver was uh, making major moves elsewhere, same thing again here. And uh, just keeping the pressure up on all the lands. Should be on high ground fairly soon here. Anti Mage is going to respawn, but just doesn't have anything. A 19 minute Battle Fury now turning into more of a 20 minute Battle Fury. There's no space for him to farm. He can't leave his base without being spotted. We got OBS on the uh, Dire Side Secret Shop area, so they'll see Masha if he goes in that direction. Everyone else is chilling near this top lane, so obviously they'll just run into him if he's going in that direction. Nowhere to farm. It does feel like for Taka, you know, maybe some of these issues could have been alleviated by, you know, perhaps keeping Masha in the mid lane. That's where he, we've seen him thrive, mm -hmm. take lanes at worst evenly pretty much every single time and keep I Hate Anime in that safe lane. Just, just try to keep they them died. in their comfort zone because it doesn't seem yeah. like, despite the fact that Masha is very comfortable in this anti-mage and uh, Venomancer, I Hate Anime, they may be very comfortable as well. It just seems like their lanes and their matchups just not quite working out well enough. Mm -hmm. The Moonlight Shadow is there. I don't really know if they saw it, but they're playing as if they did. But, I mean, yeah, you're in your base not farming. That's still just fine for SGE. Radiant yeah, they're comfortable Austin. with this. They haven't picked up that Roshan. Oh, no, sorry, they did. So they're sitting with the Roshan and uh, looking to utilize that as uh, just very slowly getting everything together. The Weaver, a 1,000 from finishing up his Desolator. Um, next big item on the way for him. We finally get the 20 minute Battle Fury. Hey, he's gonna have those power treads soon. Get so many item slots. But in the meantime, like, yeah, Anti Mage does have that, so in theory, he could farm faster. But again, wherever he goes, he's most likely gonna be spotted moving out. Like, look at this. Is this a Radiant Ob? It's a Radiant Ob's on top lane and bottom lane. So the Anti Mage just, like, actually can't leave this base without smoking out to try to get to the radiant jungle to farm like that sounds ridiculous and it is but in this meantime everyone on sge like we got costa just farming the mid lane marana and shaker they're farming the jungle in the top lane they're farming absolutely everywhere and taka are farming like one lane at a time sometimes when they're able to get in there look masha actually is smoked up and he is just gonna make a big push to the enemy jungle that's where the gold is man that's where they're gonna find that gold. Yeah, gotta get that money somehow. And he knows nobody else is gonna be down there bothering him, so he's gonna be real happy about it. Actually and, was, yeah. well he's gonna show himself. Yeah. You know that he's up to something. And there was a Puck farming that's uh, in this area as well, so he's actually going to return after basing. So Masha is, yeah, gonna get some gold together, but oh, is he gonna stick around here? He does have a TP. There's no Yule Scepter yet, and uh, people are dying in the meantime. As yeah. Gosta is just gonna cut the wave again and just snipe the poor Shadow Shaman. No way to survive that as Shadow Shaman, especially up against Lincoln Spear. He's got Desolator uh, on the way. ADR has Dragon Lance um, on the courier as well. Yes. So more fat items coming out for SG on the Radiant, and uh, it's just gonna make all of these fights more difficult. AM has that Battle Fury, but that's really, that is it. Oh, Masha. He doesn't have a Creep Wave with him, so an Echo Slam won't do all that much. They're going to run into PTT instead. Oh my god, that damage. I, okay, Chain Frost, sure. He's dead. Earthshaker is still stalking Masha. Perfect position. Where's the help? It's coming in very quickly in the form of a Weaver. Enchant Totem. 
And Echo Slam, well, he may be blinking out here. Costa's swarm will be off the mark. Masha, though, is just on the run, blinking deep into the He's dodging the Echo Slam, in fact. A little bit fortunate there for the Anti-Mage to get out of that situation, but ultimately, like, yeah, he kills two, three creep waves. ADR is doing the exact same on top lane, so any farm that he gets is being matched and then some by SGE. Aegis gets reclaimed, so Marana going to pick up that uh, Dragon Lance to fill the void in her life. And still get that... Uh... Nant style on route. Shadowburn is. He's picked up 600 gold since I last checked like five minutes ago. That feels really bad. <laughs> and any like one hero has got to be really careful. Rana at this point with the Lincoln Spear can throw out arrows very freely. Between that and the Ring of Aquila and the bottle, like her mana generation is so high and oh, 444. <laughs> Please mercy for the Shadow Shaman. He doesn't deserve it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He is definitely a super broke. Been getting beat down on continuously. They're looking to uh, push top. They got all five players up there. Weaver's just going to walk up to the high ground, get that Desolator debuff on the tower, take a few shots here. Mm -hmm. These are really the items they're waiting for. The Desolator lets them do damage, and ADR with this Dragonlands is able to shoot from very far away in order to kind of abuse that lack of armor. That is going to be tower down. The Plague Wards are starting to be built up. They're level 4, but they're still just two-shotted by the Marana, so that's some free farm for her right there. Shadowburn up in the skies now is looking for maybe something to do, but they are going to actually catch wind of the Anti-Mage. Teleporting up the high ground will be fine. Mm -hmm. but they already take down a tower, and that, of course, means shrines will be taken, which, of course, is going to open up the door for that next Roche, which I, I want to say is already locked up for SG Esports, unless something yeah. disastrous happens. Am did get the courier, so that was just a nice uh, behind enemy lines pick off, but really a, a pretty small consolation again. He's pushing bottom. He's trying. We can see SGE though. They're they're slowly getting like more and more impatient with this AM. They're sending more and more heroes down to that bottom lane every single time. Because in the meantime, Marana is literally untouchable up towards top lane. And they'll actually run into the anti-mage, Coil and Silence, all there with the orb. He is getting a lot of shrine regeneration. He's going to blink out, but he actually snaps the coil and will be taken down just by Puck and Weaver. Yeah, meantime, they're nice. chasing after ADR. Ice armor does go up. Chain Frost as well. Going to start bouncing with the heroes. Marana, is she going to die here? She has no leap. She already used it. And Bardinho as well is going to take a lot of damage here from the charge in Nether Strike as well. They'll lose two for one, and but here comes Costa. He's going to look for the... No, not the Shadow Shaman. Okay, he's going to teleport out in time. He'll survive. Looks like the Marana wasn't quite as untouchable as she perhaps thought, as I perhaps thought. But still, they lose the Anti-Mage. So no matter how much you gold you get from killing off those heroes, you're not getting anything done in the meantime. Yeah, they took more damage to that range Rax as well. Um, Marana just uh, providing a very nice distraction while that Anti-Mage was under attack. Batrider jumping in here. We're gonna be trying to get more. He's on top of Theo, but taking a ton of damage. Echo Slam continues the Earth Shaker stun. We were hitting uh, Spirit Breaker with the Shikuchi. You're gonna come out of it. The dust is there as well. That finds the Earth Shaker. The Dream Coil though gets these two Shadow Shaman and Spirit Breaker. Going to get taken down, and that is three dead for Taka. Okay is called. The Posa is getting a <laughs> sick amount of farm. He was going yeah. for Yules, still is going for Yules, and has it on the courier, but on top. Ooh. And yeah. on top of that, he also has Hand of Midas, which I think he just, like, he was going for Yules, and he's like, wait, I can just get Midas. So he picked up the Midas mm -hmm. and a level 1 Dagon. So, you know, I, th I think this Puck has enough gold to last the rest of the game, not to mention the fact that he's <laughs> level 17, 26 yeah. minutes in, so he's gunning towards that 420 GPM yes. mighty quick. So as I say, you get that Hand of Midas, you get that extra XP, you get to level 25 faster, then you just sell that Hand of Midas, you still get that mm -hmm. 420 gold per minute. Be balling. Get your Shiva's Guard, get your Yule Scepter, uh, Dagon 5. All, right. all the good stuff here for the puck. Yeah, what more could a little fairy want? And in the meantime, Weaver also collecting heads all over the place. Has actually not died in this game. And oh, wow. yeah, Desolator, Lincoln Sphere with another 3,300 gold. It does feel like the, uh, the puck has, like, I mean, with this type of itemization, like, it feels like the puck has more net worth right now is like I contributing a little bit more because Weaver mm -hmm. has gone for these like really expensive items holding a lot of uh, gold in cash and not in items but 
I mean, you can buy whatever you want as the Weaver. Straight Dragonlance? Yeah. I mean, I can see the Weaver getting away with that. This BKB, though, is going to yeah. be a game-winning item. At least, in theory, it's supposed to be an yeah. item that they pick up to win the game off of. Like, once the BKB comes up, Taka can lasso him, but they can't kill him. Yeah, that BKB is going to be brutal for um, Weaver. Just going to enable him to Shikuchi, Shikuchi, run around, have no problems with the Veno damage as well. And uh, just be able to completely handle the business. Uh, so they already just have a huge lead in terms of uh, items and capability, and uh, just getting um, wider and wider with uh, some of these uh, further um, items that they're uh, about to pick up. Uh, shout out from Bardino while we're paused here to Mr. F for teaching all of us to play Dota. Mr. F? I don't know who that is. Yeah, me either, Maybe but, you know, other players uh, jumping in for to, to show some respect, so I don't know if that's their coach or just somebody from the South American community or somebody we are just, who doesn't, who hasn't taught us Dota. I don't know. I think in order to be in the loop, you first got to learn the language. and uh, <laughs> That helps. Yeah, we, I, I, I haven't. I don't know how your non-English languages are right now. Yo, yo tengo los español de los cocinero, so... I can, oh. I can ask I, for I was more. up to you there until the last word. I don't know what that one is. I have, like, uh, actually, like, an elementary school Spanish education. Like, that's when my uh, Spanish education stopped. I said I have the Spanish of the, of the kitchen. So oh. I know how to ask for more guacamole and what needs to be prepped, et cetera. But, that's all you need, man. Like, yeah, I don't know how much uh, Dota Spanish there is, but <laughs> I mean, that, that's my... definitely not as useful in general. I, I'm stretching out, so I, I definitely have a coworker, you know, that teach me a little bit of Spanish. I try to talk about Dota and tell them about Dota, and so that helps me increase my vocabulary because I'm asking them these like kind of weirder words. But then also, it's definitely helped me um, play with the South Americans or Spanish speakers <laughs> in my games. It's just a lot of fun, and I love when they yell at me and I'm able to just tell them back, like, you know, no muerte por favor, you know, like no you're the one that's no, dying no man. more guacamole please that's <laughs> yeah all works, you know <laughs> you're forced to pick up tide hunter and that that's just it yeah well hopefully four for four can come back here uh, yeah in some reasonable time frame i mean even if he's gone for good yeah i absolutely need their shadow shaman in this game to win there's no doubt about yeah. that but uh he hasn't really been doing any his team many favors, just constantly being picked off. So, mm -hmm. and the difference is maybe a little bit small. But he's also had a couple of internet issues. Really, all of Taka, yeah. Tavo had some issues, and now four for four as well. And definitely, though, you know, this game is is mostly over. But you know, for the sake of the best of five, I, I think that Taka really would prefer to battle this out a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. You know. It's probably going to be a loss, but if they were to GG here, I uh, I don't think that would uh, help them out and their chances for game three. So hopefully we can get... Okay, yeah, here we go. Um, 4 for 4 has reconnected, and SG is saying that they are ready, so we should be resuming momentarily. This might be like the after effects of that loss in game one. Like That is a really tilting way to lose, where you're ahead, you're, you're controlling yeah. the entire game, and then, oops, no buyback, and then you lose. So... It is like that the kind of small metagame that develops in the best of five. Usually you just see it in how teams change their bands and change their picks after what worked, what didn't work. But also it's like, you're going to be... If you do lose this as Taka, you gotta win three in a row up against SGE. Yeah. Like, you have to reset to zero and hope that even being reset to zero is, is good enough to beat a team that many would consider the favorites. It's not an easy task, so... Mm -hmm. it, certainly just trying to break even here, force a, a pure best of three scenario is, is obviously what you want to do, just keep your head in the game, but not the easiest thing in the world. Theo is being charged, there's a lot of backup here, but Dino's going to show himself off, PTT still charging in, Theo's going to jump away, they do have the Moonlight Shadow Fissure, not going to connect on the Spirit Breaker with the focus of the lasso, Shaker should be dealt with, as well as the last one to Bardino, they'll take down the two, although Theo will get a Fissure out, it's not going to do all that much. Taka do make a really, really nice aggressive move onto SGE and take out the two supports. Not exactly the heroes that they would want to kill off, but beggars can't be choosers. Yeah, at this point, uh, any sort of money is good money. Any sort of kills will uh, make a difference, create some space for him. 
and uh, help those waves get pushed out. Their bottom lane is almost towards the tier two, so that's gonna create some room for them in um, their off lane jungle. Their top lane not really pushing out, but at least the mid lane has pushed out to the river, so um, slight amount of space, and we'll see if they'll be able to maybe find another kill here while uh, Lich and Earthshake are still respawning and Moonlight Shadow still down for another uh, 45 seconds. Uh, it is a high-level Shaker, a high-level Lich, at least above normal. But still, they are just support heroes, so they'll be up soon. The Weaver on the bottom lane has Lincoln's BKB. I'm not really sure if it's even worth Taka's time. Let's say they get Refresher Orbs right now, get back to Lasso, get back to Nether Strike. Is that actually going to be enough to kill off this Weaver? It is not an easy yes. It is definitely debatable, at least. So They have now two BKBs, actually. One on the Murana, one on that Weaver with an Aegis Cheese perhaps available to them. Looking for a pick off first. Please let it not be Shadow Shaman. This guy's had enough. <laughs> Let's with the Desolator. They don't actually care about getting a pick. They're just going to go straight in and Taka. They should probably know about this, but at the same time, it's dead already. Yeah. Yeah, the Weaver rotating away from that shrine should give you like some sort of you know question over whether you know something else is going on that's more important than that shrine. It is the Roshan, but that was just super super quick, and uh, they're not in the fighting shape to be able to contest that. Even in that ideal scenario, you put wards at the center uh, or the entrance to the pit. You you hit that poison nova, uh, you probably still all die after that. <laughs> doesn't exactly bode well and now this also doesn't bode well they were doing a good job at focusing what needs to be focused up towards top range racks over melee with just chip damage and i think they should be able to just walk in and claim the rest of this range racks at least bat rider where is he he's going to take the disguise now has the blink dagger has the lasso fissure is going to be used perhaps a little bit early for cover but they have to also burn through this lincoln sphere both of the two frontliners have lincoln's and the bat rider doesn't have any way of canceling lincoln's by himself so what they need to do is Use the charge on the Spirit Breaker and then immediately blink Lasso afterwards. It is very, very difficult to do properly. And it'll cost them a Rax as they try to scramble for some split push on bottom lane. Ardino Chain Frost going to put a quick end to those anti mage illusions. Looks like they're going to go for top and bottom, perhaps, over uh, top and mid. Yeah, we'll see. They've backed up for now, creating some space. Anti-Mage has now got to leave. They're going to actually smoke up. There is no one on the bottom lane, and I'm pretty sure Taka know that well, they, they left top. They didn't see the mid, so they should be on bottom lane. Like That's the logical assumption there. Weaver's going to blow his cover, but everyone else still moving. And the Anti-Mage, and usually when you kill off this creep wave, do you go into the jungle? No, not quite. He will get hit with the coil, though. And now the silence. He already used the Manta style. And with the Echo Slam, they will drop him very low and drop him. They will get a really nice Nova off in the middle, but there's just no more consistent damage being dealt here. A Shadowburn will be dealt with. ADR and Costa just jumping forward, looking for a little bit more. They'll farm the Serpent Wards instead. Buyback on the Bat Rider is going to be committed here. And, well, maybe they'll take out the Weaver. No, they can't actually shackle him. The range, the speed at which Shadow Shaw moves is just a little bit too slow. Anti-Mage is down for 40, and yeah, SG, they have lost two heroes, but they still have Aegis and Cheese, so you know, they can still make a play happen here. Yeah, that was a, a, a good enough start for them. I mean, it's just creating more pressure, more damage. They're going to get this shrine on bottom and uh, just kind of uh, keep it up. Again, they have to back up a little bit with those two players down, but Earthshaker Lich will be coming back soon. Just AM missing out on more and more opportunity. Like using Manta Style kind of kind of panicky there. You obviously mm -hmm. in theory want to use Manta Style to get rid of that puck silence and then immediately blink out. But used it a little bit too early and the silence stuck. He actually did live for quite a long time considering how the difference in time between when they actually caught him and when they actually killed uh -huh. him, but there's very little response there from Taka. Smoke up is going to be blown as Laposa. Does he reveal PTT? Immediately blink coil and with a Dagon. My god. Yeah. Okay. Puck is uh, now a damage dealer. Is that a level 5 Dagon? It's only level 4. But either way, Spirit Breaker down for 40. No buyback. 
Weaver in the front does have Lincolns and Cheese. And because they don't have that Spirit Breaker, they don't have that charge to break the Lincoln. So whoever's on that front line mm -hmm. is almost completely immune to that Bat Rider unless somehow the Shadow Shaman gets in there. Actually, no, uh, they Masha, do have a Force Staff on the Venomancer, so he can Masha back him. by the tower over here. Gonna get gunned down. I don't know what he was doing back there. He's trying to do some sort of flank play. He's trying to initiate. Not gonna work out. Just gonna continue pushing up bottom now. I just didn't even cross my mind that an anti would <laughs> yeah. be in that position. Like, right? I, I understand sometimes we see a couple of heroes teleport into a shrine back there and try to get a wraparound. But there is no shrine, so he just walked yeah. there. Big charge in onto three heroes. We'll do quite a bit of damage. The Shaker is going to die before getting the Echo Slam off, but Costa with the BKB is just going to stand and fight. And the Murana, yes, yeah, she has an Aegis, but that's exactly what it's for. That's two down and right, oh. looking for a third. Another good charge onto the Weaver with the Serpent Wards firing in, but he's going to chow down on the cheese. It's good for you. It's calcium. Triple kill for ADR. And that's yeah. GG called that. Is going to be a one convincing game from SG Esports, and now Taka had the Herculean task of winning three games in a row to actually win. Yeah, that one was brutal. Definitely, um, just more destructive in terms of the laning, and uh, felt a little bit more like an outplay versus uh, just a little bit of maybe bad decision making of game one, where game one uh, the draft seemed like it was going to turn around in Taka's favor. It kind of sort of did turn around in Taka's favor, and then they they dropped the ball by by losing a fight they didn't really want to lose. This game just oof, got off bad from the start. Um, we discussed that you know the the laning differences. Maybe they should have ran that um, AM mid with support, and then the Veno. If the Veno was top there, maybe would have been able to just kind of farm jungle a little bit better than the AM was in the early game. Get off a better start, but I don't know that last pick AM seems sort of desperate and um, desperate picks and um, not the cleanest to play led to SG Esports just really, they really put it together and uh, were extremely difficult for Taka to, to deal with. I mean, Maposa hasn't died in this game. 12-0-10, yeah. 8-0-15 on Weaver. I still think that uh, Theo though, the Earthshaker, got to give him the MVP. Like he was absolutely everywhere. He was dominating the lanes and setting up kills for his cores. Really all you want your Earthshaker ever to do, but guys, this is the end of game two, and, well, I mean, I don't want to jinx it or anything, but, again, all the other ESL qualifying uh, grand finals from other regions, they were all 3-0, uh, so it looks like we might actually have a curse on our hands. We'll see if Taka can break the curse and get an additional game out of this series, but for right now, we're going to move on to game three. I'm Mike Loris. I've been joined by Eckstein. Don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be right back. Mm-hmm.